at Art of Anger in Tower District in Fresno, California, and I am excited to rage. Come on, let's go. episode of FMBCC's Home Shopping Experience. Our studio is currently being transformed into a sacred healing space by Miss Melissa Knight from Heart of Anger. How are Thank you, Melissa? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. So Melissa is the owner of Art of Anger, which is a rage room, but it's also so much more than that. So we're going to dive in and show you guys a little bit about the process today. How are you doing? I'm great. This is so amazing to have the opportunity to talk about this. It is my life's work, and I'm excited about it. It's an opportunity for people to heal stuff that's been pushed down for decades and decades, and it's everyone can heal. The entire family we can heal. Families we can heal. Communities we can heal. Folks at work. It's it's amazing. I love it. I love this concept as an idea of healing. People may have heard of rage rooms before. You go, you sign a, uh, an injury waiver, you break some stuff, right? Yeah. Which, which we know is fun, <laughs> but there's so much more to it than that. You have um, a background in trauma, right? And you've worked for a long time um, with people who need healing, and now you are this practitioner of healing. Tell me about how your background goes a little bit. So I've been a women's gender and sexuality studies professor for 24 years, and I've worked in health and human services, nonprofits, working with folks with HIV and AIDS and homelessness and drug and alcohol treatment. So people in trauma for my entire career, mm -hmm. and it's all come forward into this. And I didn't realize at the time that that's what it was building to, but this is what it is. This is that moment where you go, this is what this is all about. And so people have stuff, lots of stuff. It is the heavy emotions, anger, rage, grief, trauma, sadness, disappointment, frustration that are heavy and so they weigh heavy in the body. Then they get pushed down further by shame every time someone says, why are you hold on to that? Just let it go. Calm down. Get over it. That's shame. It pushes it down further, it attaches to cells, and it makes us feel. We know this clinically with studies, ACEs, adverse childhood experiences scale, the higher your ACEs score, the higher the propensity of poor health outcomes, things that we have, diabetes and high blood pressure and autoimmune disorders, those numbers go through the roof. It shortens our lifespan. We need to get that stuff out of our body. I've created a place for, for us to do that. I love that and for all so ages. much. And so... Um, in your work, uh, you, uh, we have actually uh, have a membership in my family, and we've been going, and you've been explaining to me a little bit about this. These are concepts, you know, that I have never personally, in, in, in my 36 years, heard of. Um, as we know, mental health, especially in communities of color, is not, uh, it's kind of a taboo topic. It's not something, that we don't talk about, you know, the weight in our feet from our childhood trauma. It's right. like not a thing. Right. And at the same time, not only do we have this stuff across our lives, but as people of color, we are carrying family lineage and we are carrying ancestral trauma. Yes. And so when we do this kind of healing work, we are not only healing for ourselves, we're healing up and down the family line and that type of healing work reverberates around the planet and we are really healing each other by doing this sacred work. So I have a membership for me and my children. Um, I have a just seven-year-old and an eight-year-old about to be nine. And, you know, we come in to do this process. I was really nervous to come in and grab our weapons and start breaking stuff. Let's talk a little bit about the process and kind of how you walked us through. When we first come in, there's orientation, which is great. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we do it and, and why we do it. And as I'm gearing you up, the gear up is important. And especially with the kiddos, we're the only rage room on the entire planet that does not have an age minimum. And we're very proud of that. And so little littles can come. And so um, getting the right gear for them, the helmets need to fit. They've got face shields. They've got a, a tie deck or some kind of jumpsuit type thing. And really thick gloves so that they're protected all the way through. That's important. And then I go through the rules with them when we get them in the rooms. Like, this is what you can't do. Um, you're not going to stomp on things. You're not going to kick things because that's going to, you're going to go sliding. And there's broken stuff, right? And naturally, we're going to you know, put our hands down. You really so, built out the program that, you know, uncertain liability for something like this is huge. But that, that to me, says a lot. The fact that the people who ensure this for you have said, we trust that you know what you're doing enough that you can let anybody come in and do this it's, work. It's exactly, absolutely. Um, our insurance is with one of the companies that insures most rate rooms around the country. And 
Uh, most rage rooms, all other rage rooms, classify as entertainment. We very specifically classify as alternative mental health. So this is holistic alternative mental health. And it is. It is uh, my background. I sent them my 20-page my CD and um, the full description underlying you know, all of the research that backed it up. And <laughs> this is how I'm going to do it. And here are the pictures of how I set it up. And I expected that because this is spiritual work and I was being guided you know, by creator to do this, to bring this to people um, so that they could heal, mm -hmm. that the answer would be yes. And I got that. So when you come in, you know that you're going to be safe and you're going to be in very amazing hands. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the process. So yeah. you come in, you do the orientation. Um, you're going to start with picking weapons, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what is over here. just samples of weapons. But yes, notice this shiny stuff on the weapons. Um, anytime a weapon is used in a ratio, it's going to pick up that glass, mm -hmm. breaking glass with it. And so there are some short things. There are longer things. And there, the array of weapons is, you know, as big as this entire set. Um, here's some of the glass things that, that get broken, as well as electronics. Some people really like to get to the guts of the electronics and get that stuff out. So it's really about finding the thing that the stuff, as I say, that get you to your stuff. Right? I think we have yeah. some footage of me. I actually had a dollhouse when I came oh, in and right. did my yes, I shaped that for you. Yes. And uh you know you talked about how maybe there's a connection to your childhood or something Absolutely. that you you know did it up. Tell me about this painting here. So this is uh this was a 15 year old three years ago and um in the Zen room when you come out of the rage room you're gonna go into my Zen room and it's for cool down. It is to, to calm you and ground you and so you you're throwing paint. She actually did brushstroke work and portraiture, and most people notice that, oh wow, it's beautiful, she looks contented. The paper's actually brown. She painted the black night sky, a feast for eternity, and she is looking very peaceful, right? But look at her neck. She painted the purple and the green and the yellow to distract us from the dripping red blood. She's contented and peaceful because this is a severed head. We've had um, nearly 30 young people in the last couple of months dealing with suicidal ideation. So wow. it, it, these pictures, I've got another one that I left at the shop, um, are right in that front area because it actually um, depicts that trauma transformation that we do, that this isn't just about um, throwing things and breaking things. This is about giving people a space to heal. And this is another thing that happens in our zen. These are maybe stepping stones, and they are the art part of the art finger because people think it is the splatter of paint. That's actually a low-no in that rage room and to calm you. This is the art part that when you are done, we can save some of the broken pieces and you can create a unique piece of art or stepping stone on the spot. And every time you see it, every time you move past it, you're reminded that your healing journey has been I done. love that. It's like it symbolizes some things that you let go. And yes. you know, it's something physical. I put that yes. there. Yes. And yes. I, I love the idea of this. You're in charge of you. You're moving past the trauma. You're yes. The Giving the past. person their power back. Yes. Yes, giving them the opportunity so to take their power back. And we know this. We know when we stand in our power, when we own our power, we own our truth, we give other people permission to stand in theirs. And that's what this is really all about. That is so beautiful. Okay, I want to take a minute to tell people where they can find you. Um, where's your location? We are in the Tower District. We're at 1328 North Bushan. And that is um, right in the heart of the Tower District. And our web address is www.theartofanger.com. And you can reach us at 559-543-8979. We're going to put the links up at the bottom of this screen. I really want to encourage everybody to uh, check out Art of Anger. I mean, it's something that you can do that's fun, but... You have no idea, even if you just went in to break stuff, right. there's so many things that come up to the surface anyway, and you really create a sacred space where people can feel those emotions that you're there to talk. Like, you know, know that when you guys go into this location, this is not just the owner, this is the practitioner. You are working with people on a day-to-day -day basis and really holding space for so many people in our community. And for whatever they come in for. People come in for birthday parties and they're not coming in, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in trauma. No, they come in to a birthday party or date night or a corporate retreat type mm -hmm. thing. And so it doesn't matter that you may not be in your fields about your trauma. Um, the place is set up to help you release whatever you are ready to release. And so just come in for the birthday party. Come in with the corporate group. Mm -hmm. Come in to do date night. Um, you're still going to get what you need. You're yes. going to release what you're ready to. I love that. Uh, Melissa and I are doing amazing work out of Art of Anger in the Tower District in Fresno. Thank you again just for, like I said, holding so much space for this community, um, transforming lives with your work. Um, I encourage everybody to check it out and sign up for a day, sign up for a membership. It is Absolutely. extremely valuable and, and really amazing inner work. Thank so, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ready to unlock all the available resources to you as a Black entrepreneur? 
Want to connect with one of the largest business organizations in the Central Valley? As a member of the Fresno Metro Black Chamber of Commerce, you get the power of these resources and more. Become a member. Visit fmbcc.com slash membership and get started today. We are here today with a very special guest. I'm so excited to have her, Ms. Shatira Sangster, who is actually our Marketing and Communications Manager at the Chamber. But she's here today to talk about her new business, Social Media Sidekick. Hey, you doing, I'm doing good. How are you? Good. I'm so excited to have you here in the yeah. hot seat to talk about your new business. So um, one thing I love about this is that you work for the Chamber alongside me. Um, we both know what it's like to work day to day with small businesses who have different barriers, different needs. Um, I love to see you starting your own business yeah. in the midst of doing this work alongside other businesses. So I want to talk a little bit more how that's helped you later. But um, let's just start with, you know, how did you get started? How did you, what made you decide that you wanted to start your own business in social media and marketing? So it's a, I have, it's a two part kind of question. I have a longer version and a shorter version. So I'll go into both. So I graduated from Fresno State University with a bachelor's of science in marketing. And um, from there, you know, I didn't have any experience. I didn't do any internships. So if I'm looking for jobs, it's the door is constantly slammed in my face. Right. right. They're like, you have the degree, but you don't have experience. So um, it was a just a crossroad, and it was it was hard. Interestingly, <laughs> yeah. I actually have the same degree <laughs> and ran into the same problem when I graduated. Yes. When you're in school, they don't really tell you what you're going to do with that marketing degree. You have these big mm -hmm. dreams of, you know, I, I thought I was going to be in an ad agency in New York City yes. after yeah. I graduated. But the reality of it is a lot of marketing students don't know what direction to go. A lot of people end up in sales or mm -hmm. doing something like what you did. So you decided you were going to branch out on your own. Yeah. And any advice to anybody... Do internships. Do it. Yes. Do it. Yes. <laughs> but yes. I um I went out on my own and I started soliciting businesses, doing social media for different companies. So that's how the birth of um, social media became for me. And you know, back then it was social media was fairly new. So. Right. It was a really yeah, limited market. Yeah. So um, I got into that, and from there I went on to Table Mountain Casino, also Valley PBS. And then COVID hit, so, you know, everything is closed down. So um, I wind up at the same time working at the Chamber and starting my own social media company as well. So, yeah. I mean, it was a good time for a lot of people. Things were closed down. Yeah. It was it was easy to lean into those things that you had to kind of let go, those projects and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and the need for social media at that time was so, so, so vast. Um, because everybody's... yeah. Especially, yeah. you know, all the businesses are closed down and it's like, okay, where do we go? You go online. So I definitely saw a need to help others and help them build their presence on social media that way. I love it. So you were recently fe featured on an issue of RPG Show Magazine, um, which is awesome. I've never been in a magazine before and you look just amazing. You really do. Thank you. What was this process like? What was this experience like for you? This was, it was a very, very fun experience. Um, they reached out to me. I um, I love hair, so I wear all kinds of <laughs> I love hair and things. So this is actually a hair magazine, but uh, this particular um, magazine, they're celebrating black women entrepreneurs. Boss Women in Charge is what the, um, the magazine um feature is this for this um, season. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I did the interview and um, I also want to shout out Tracy Ardell Studios because she, she does a great job with photos by the way. Your, oh, these yeah. photos are <laughs> yeah. fantastic. She, she does <laughs> a wonder, and she's a local photographer out here. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah, is this awesome. a local magazine? No, this the magazine itself is not local but the photos. Okay, are local. I love that. Um, but, um, you know, I just talked about my experience, how, you know, I came to doing social media sidekick and um, one of the, the things that's really special about this magazine is that my father, he passed away. And before he passed away, um, I showed him the magazine. I was so happy. I was like, look at this. I, actually, I was going to keep the surprise from him and then show him afterwards. But um, so you showed him like a draft? I showed him a draft. And um, four days after he passed, they, they released the magazine. So I was just really thankful that he got to see that. That's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, I know that you premiered your book on uh, in that publication. So tell me about that. 
So I actually, my book is actually, it's, it's, we're, we're taking pre-orders right now. It's not, it's not fully released yet. So um, sometime in the fall, we'll release the book, The Power of Social Media. Um, and that's pretty much what I'm doing there is, it's, it's like your social media Bible, going through the basics of social media, um, what you need to do to start, to grow, to build your online presence. So it's a really good beginner's guide, but it's also, it's a good guide um, for even if you're an expert mm -hmm. and you need something to refer to, this book is great. So it's just What we reference. know in the work that we do, working with different businesses, coming in at different levels every day, you need help at every stage of the game. Mm -hmm. And so um, I love this idea of this like social media Bible that you can go to and reference in case you just need to brush up on some. I was actually telling you before, like, I'm not a big reader. So is this user friendly? And is, you know, yes, is this going to be, so you can kind of pop in and just mm -hmm. get help on specific things that you need to know about, right? Exactly. If you, if you want to know about hashtags, but how that works, there's a chapter on that. There's a specific chapter on every single thing that you need to know in order to successfully succeed. navigate. Mm -hmm. Social yeah. media. So that's awesome. Write a book. Was that something that you thought you'd be doing? No, I've never, I've never, I never thought I would be an author. Right. <laughs> Hearing that sounds, it sounds interesting, but um, I mean, I talk about it all the time. Like some of my services that I offer are workshops. Mm -hmm. Why not write, you know, write yeah. stuff down, get it down and it's actually, paper. exactly. And, and help people like, um, for example, I do, um, I do these classes, but some people I reach, they are across they, the United States. Yeah. So I'm not they necessarily need able resources. to, exactly. So they can always come to this and I'm there and look for Right. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're there on the pages. <laughs> yes. So let's talk about the importance of social media. Mm -hmm. Tell me, um, ju just, you know, top three things that people need to know. <laughs> top three things. Um, you want to be on social media, especially yes. being a business owner. Um, and that's because that you're able to reach your audience. You're able to reach a wider net of people. You make yourself visible. And that's very important for small businesses. Mm -hmm. So it's that visibility. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and another tip I can, um, that I would uh, always tell people is consistency. Social media is about consistency. It's like a plant. It's like a garden. What you put in it into it, that's what you're going to get out of it. Yeah. We so. hear a lot of people talking about the algorithm mm -hmm. and the Instagram doesn't want you to see the thing, but I think it really goes back to consistency and how you're always yeah. working with that algorithm. The more consistent you are, yeah. the more you kind of learn how to navigate it as you go, right? Exactly. And then you have to, you have to keep in mind that the algorithm is always changing. Mm -hmm. So um, you always have to keep that in mind. But if you're consistent and you start building your following your audience, they're going to be there. And that's what you want at the end of the day, especially as a small business. You want to turn these followers, these fans, you want to convert them into conversions. You want to have that sell, that revenue. And that's really, really is at the end of the day. So. All right. One more. Give me one more. Give me something good for the people. What do they some, need some, to know? Some good. Some, some good. <laughs> Let's give me some good. Okay. Well, especially just starting off, you are going to want to incorporate the hashtag into your mix. Yes, starting off because I am not good at hashtags. Yeah, so, so talk hashtags. to me a little bit about that. So hashtags, they're um, they're like little. This there we go. Here. This guy. <laughs> right here. Yeah. And um, they're categories, and they're um, they help people discover you. So people that are interested in whatever you're looking for, it could be Fresno hashtag Fresno. There are people interested in knowing about Fresno. They can click that hashtag and they're going to find everything that is to know about Fresno, what's going on, the big happening. And those hashtags mm -hmm. also work with those algorithms we're talking about and mm -hmm. things like that, right? It maybe yeah. makes you more visible to a certain audience versus yeah. another one. And you're going to want that certain audience, especially starting off, because the world of social media and online is so big. So you're going to want yourself to be visible. The more visibility you can get, the better for yourself. So. Right. And that's a, mm -hmm. a great way for you to target your audience, which exactly. even before social media existed, we know a lot about knowing your target market, mm -hmm. knowing who your customer is yeah. and who you need to get in, get in front yeah. of. And so hashtags are a really great way to do yes. that as well.
Well, I'm really excited to dive into your book. I can't wait until it's released. We'll probably have you back on to talk about it. And um, thank you for the work that you're doing in the community, not just on your own, but what you're doing with the chamber. I think that's that's an amazing thing. Um, and you're coming from an angle of helping people, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like so much of that is going to go back into your business. I know for me, the work that I do with other business owners, it's going into the customer service in yeah. my actual business. Yeah, yeah. I love it. And so thank you so much for joining us today, Shatira. And uh, and you guys, make sure to check out Social Media Sidekick online. We've got all the links at the bottom. Hi, I'm Dr. Rochelle Thomas, and I founded Allay Psychological Services in June of 2018 to ensure that our community had the help that we needed at affordable cost. If you're interested in receiving services, contact us today through our website at www.alaypsych.com. You'll be so glad that you did. A love for fashion has always been a part of Kay Monet's life. But what enhanced her to start Kay Monet's styles was her 10 years of retail management in the Bay Area. After seeing people shop with no guidance or buying brands they didn't know how to wear, she discovered that she found her niche. Kay Monet's style is helping people create a style of their own. She created a fashion and personal styling business with apparel you can easily incorporate into your own wardrobe and create a style made just for you. She's now back in her hometown and says, I'm here to change the fashion industry in Fresno. Last fall, she debuted the No Fashion Show, bringing together 10 of Fresno's most dynamic designers. With personal styling, fashion styling, and being a voice in the fashion industry, Kay Monet is quickly becoming the voice of fashion in our community. She is definitely on the rise. Ready to unlock all the available resources to you as a Black entrepreneur? Want to connect with one of the largest business organizations in the Central Valley? As a member of the Fresno Metro Black Chamber of Commerce, you get the power of these resources and more. Become a member. Visit fmbcc.com slash membership and get started today. Well, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Many thanks to Melissa Knight holding space for the entire community at Art of Anger. And thank you to Shatira Sangster, the social media gangster, and your social media sidekick. You guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend.